Hi everybody, my name is Alicia. Welcome to part one of the English Sentence Structure series. This series will cover the four sentence structures of English and will help you improve your writing. You'll learn how to connect your ideas, correctly punctuate your sentences, and write long sentences that your reader will be able to understand. I'll cover the basics of some important grammatical concepts, and I'll also share some hints you can use to make sure your writing is correct. In this video, part one, I'm going to talk about the most basic of the four sentence structures of English, the simple sentence. Let's get started. First, let's define the expression simple sentence. A simple sentence is a sentence that has just one independent clause. What's an independent clause? This is the first of our very important grammatical concepts in this series. An independent clause is a set of words that has a subject and a verb. An independent clause can stand alone. It doesn't need any other information. The most basic form of an independent clause is simply a subject and a verb. For example, I ate. She slept. He exercised. These are all extremely simple examples of independent clauses. They have a subject and a verb. They don't need any other information to create a grammatically correct sentence. Sentences that are simply independent clauses are also referred to as simple sentences. In fact, you may see grammar and writing resources using the expressions independent clause and simple sentence to refer to the same thing. Okay, next let's take a look at some slightly longer examples of simple sentences. I ate pizza. She slept in her bedroom. He exercised for one hour. As you can see, these sentences have a little more information, but they are still independent clauses. The sentences can stand alone. The first sentence has an object, pizza. The second and third sentences have prepositional phrases, in her bedroom and for one hour. Although these changes to the original sentences use more words and give us extra detail, they do not change the fact that these sentences are still examples of independent clauses. They each contain a subject and a verb and can still stand alone. Okay, let's add on to these sentences one more time to see how far we can go with simple sentences. I ate pizza and drank juice. She slept in her bedroom on the bed. He exercised for one hour in the park. Again, we've added some new information to each sentence. In the first sentence, we've added a second verb. Although this sentence now has two verbs, both verbs were done by the same subject. The sentence is expressing two actions I did. This still qualifies as an independent clause or a simple sentence because the sentence can stand alone and form a complete thought. In the second and third sentences, we've added more information with prepositional phrases, on the bed and in the park. Although these sentences now have many words and lots of detail, they are still considered independent clauses or simple sentences because they can stand alone. So you might be thinking, okay, how do I know if I'm looking at a clause or a prepositional phrase or something totally different? It's a good question. Clauses are unique grammatical structures in that they have subject-verb agreement. If you're looking at a group of words and you're not sure how to understand them grammatically, try looking for a subject and a verb. Then check, do the subject and the verb agree? If yes, then maybe the words you're looking at are a clause or part of a clause. On the other hand, if you're looking at a group of words that starts with a preposition, like by, to, or for, you might be looking at a prepositional phrase. In this series, we're going to focus a lot on clauses, so let's take a minute to talk about the one other type of clause. So far in this video, we've talked about independent clauses. There's one other type of clause. It's called a dependent clause. As you might be able to imagine, a dependent clause depends on other information to form a complete thought. A dependent clause cannot stand alone like an independent clause. It still has a subject and a verb, but the idea it expresses is incomplete. Here are some examples. When I went to the office. Because her mother told her to. Although he had eaten a big breakfast. Each of these clauses has a subject and a verb, but they're all missing information. These clauses don't form complete thoughts. We need some more information to finish the ideas. A really good way to spot a dependent clause is by looking for what's called a subordinating conjunction, a word used at the beginning of the clause to connect it to an independent clause. We'll talk in more detail about dependent clauses, subordinating conjunctions, and how to connect independent and dependent clauses in parts three and four of this series when we cover complex and compound complex sentences. 
Okay, let's finish this video by looking at some ways that simple sentences can occasionally get really long. We're going to look at the concepts of compound subjects and compound verbs. These expressions might sound confusing or intimidating, but they're actually quite simple. Another way to understand compound subject is multiple subjects. And another way to understand compound verbs for this video is multiple verbs. We already saw an example of a simple sentence with multiple verbs earlier in this video. I ate pizza and drank juice. We can apply this same concept to subjects. For example, my brother and I went for a drive. Jenny and Jeffrey bought lunch at the restaurant. Her mother and father spent their summer vacation in Mexico. All of these sentences are still simple sentences, still independent clauses, and they all feature compound subjects. My brother and I, Jenny and Jeffrey, and her mother and father. The sentences all have verbs that agree with the compound subjects, and they also include prepositional phrases to give detail. Great! We can expand these simple sentences even more by adding more verbs to our compound subject sentences. For example, my brother and I went for a drive and watched the sunset. Jenny and Jeffrey bought lunch at the restaurant, but got coffees at the coffee shop. Her mother and father spent their summer vacation in Mexico and enjoyed a lot of delicious local food. In these new sentences, we've added verbs and some other details. These sentences, although quite long, remain simple sentences or independent clauses. The verbs in each sentence match the subjects. In the first sentence, went and watched were both done by my brother and I. In the second sentence, bought and got were both done by Jenny and Jeffrey. In the third sentence, spent and enjoyed were both done by her mother and father. As you can see, simple sentences can get quite long, and it's not necessarily uncommon to use compound subjects and compound verbs. They can actually make a story more efficient and smooth. For example, instead of using two sentences to say, my brother and I went for a drive, we watched the sunset, we can say the same thing in one sentence by using two verbs. Choices like these will affect the rhythm of your writing, so it's a good idea to keep in mind. Okay, great! In this video, we talked about simple sentences, independent clauses, compound subjects, and compound verbs. We also talked briefly about dependent clauses and subordinating conjunctions, but we'll cover these in more detail in episodes 3 and 4 of this sentence structure series. Let's recap the key points from this video. First, a simple sentence is a sentence that can stand alone. It can be understood as an independent clause. These are sentences with a subject and a verb. They form complete ideas and need no additional information to be understood. Second, a compound subject is a sentence subject made from more than one of something, like more than one person or more than one animal or item. A compound verb is a verb made from multiple words, two verbs that come one after the other. In the second episode of this series, we'll build on the knowledge from this video and look at how we combine simple sentences or independent clauses with other simple sentences, as well as how to punctuate them correctly. That's it for episode one of the sentence structure series. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new. If you want to leave a question or a comment, or if you want to practice writing some simple sentences, feel free to do so in the comments. Of course, if this video helped you, you can help me by hitting the like button and sharing this video with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more writing, punctuation, spelling tips, and more. I'll see you next time. Bye. Simple sentences. So simple. A simple sentence. Very simple sentence. Okay, bye. <laughs>